How do I form political opinions when every position has a counter-argument and every counter-argument has a counter-argument? How are some people so cocksure of their opinion on healthcare for example when I can easily google 10 reasons why their opinion is wrong? Hi but 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 feed. We noticed you are a pretty new reddit account. So we just wanted to let you know to check out the subreddit rules here and maybe have a read through our frequently asked questions, they make for fascinating reading. We're called no stupid questions because we believe nobody needs to be attacked for asking a question. But that doesn't mean there are no rules. This sub is meant for users like you to ask genuine questions. Please don't ask jokes or rants disguised as questions, that's not in the spirit of this sub. While you can ask almost anything here. Please keep illegal and offensive questions elsewhere to give people a good experience here, and if you have a medical question. Please ask your doctor. Not us. Otherwise. Welcome. I am a bot. And this action was performed automatically. Please contact the moderators of this subreddit slash message slash compose slash to slash r slash no stupid questions if you have any questions or concerns. Political opinions aren't based on facts. As a rule. They're based on your values. You have to decide what's most important to you. And then decide what's the best way to go about getting there. It's not a math problem that can be solved. It's more like an essay question. This is the only correct answer. You should always be able to see both sides of an argument. That is a good thing. The next step is determining what you find more important. By seeing both sides of the argument. You are less likely to get carried away and support that statement no matter what. Well first off you gotta think about reliability of your sources. But Imo you should form your opinion based on what fits with your own morals. Imo this is where a lot of liberals fail to understand why conservatives can't just accept reality. Liberals tend to trust scientists because they don't politicize science. Conservatives have to play to their base. And as a result are forced to placate the religious right. That means politicizing things like evolution. Climate change. Homophobia. Etc. So when conservatives hear scientists slash experts talk. They don't really give a speep. Also. Conservatives tend to have a more independent mindset. So they put more weight into their own research and fact checking the bigger the ego. The stronger the confirmation bias. The problem is. They suck ass at actually analyzing information. Because they've been taught feelings slash beliefs are just as important as actual facts. Driven by emotion. My state elected a Republican governor and there's already talk of hope of repealing pandemic mandates. However. The new governor literally isn't changing anything at all. He says they have to find a way to protect certain businesses from lawsuits. Which sounds reasonable to the base and gives him a reason why he's not immediately repealing the statewide mask mandate and other restrictions. No change. But worded as though it is protecting businesses instead of the public and suddenly the governor is doing a good job. Previous governor was constantly criticized for establishing mandates in the first place. I also question their fact checking. My very right leaning. Q a non-believing friend thinks YouTube videos are believable over more mainstream trusted sources. No concept of how to vet sources at all. As long as it makes him feel a certain way. It's true. I think people need to establish their values and be consistent in their political beliefs. But I don't see a lot of that these days. Seems to be blind support for the team. Validation is a hell of a drug. Especially when you're part of a community that is basically a giant circle jerk. Every time your friend has one of their beliefs slash biases validated. They get a little burst of dopamine and go deeper into the rabbit hole. The only way to deprogram these people is to approach them with compassion and understanding. Regardless of the fact they wouldn't give you the same courtesy.
I actually have a no politics rule with him because he talks in circles and gets super worked up. He'll ask a bunch of questions trying to understand my side then talk over me and disregard the answers if they don't fit his narrative. I don't know that even with compassion and patience that I could get him to understand he's doing crazy mental gymnastics. A lot of the things he believes just don't make any sense. But I was brainwashed by all the libs at my small rural state college that focuses on science degrees. So what do I know? Well, it sounds like you're a good person for being patient with him and understanding he's just been brainwashed and is not actually evil. So morals are a good base to start. But counterarguments are not all the same. Anything based off feelings or beliefs aren't strong counters I feel that if they try harder or I believe we're doing enough to help those who want it are common counters but aren't actual arguments. Is morals a good start? You may or may not be in favor of gun control for moral reasons. Any given gun control law will have some effect on the rate of gun crime. Gun sales. Inconvenience for law-abiding gun owners. But some will lie or just be wrong about those effects. And regardless of your morals, you need to get the correct info first. Otherwise I can get you to agree with anything. By just spoon-feeding you the right information. Yes morals are the best place to start when building your views on the world. I'm staying out of what side I think is right. But using your example. Deciding whether you morally agree with guns is a better place to start than diving into the cesspool that is that debate. You need to have your foundation before you start questioning it. Logic and reason are only helpful if you're supporting yourself. Any good lawyer can reason and logic anything into the correct light. When it comes to guns, there is a set of evidence that will make me believe in gun control. And there is a set of evidence that will make me believe in no gun control. Some examples not real numbers or real evidence. Example use only. 1. If guns could be shown to stop a substantial number of crimes. And actively keep people safe and decrease the body count. Guns are a good idea and should have limited control. 2. If guns don't stop crimes. Lead to massive increases in suicides. And enable and promote mass shooting events. Guns are bad. And should have more extensive control. Morals are important. And still a good place to start. But evidence is crucial to coming into the correct decision. For instance I do think we should prevent suicides when possible. So guns leading to suicides is a bad thing because of my morals. If I thought suicide was a non-issue it's a personal choice or an actual positive thing someone who commits suicide probably wasn't contributing member of society then that evidence would mean different things to me. Evidence still matters quite a lot. Never said it wasn't important just said it's the best place to start. I actually think you and the other poster have pretty much the same points. Just a slightly different perspectives. You say morals first. Then find the policies that fit your morals. The other guy says figure out the facts first. Then decide what policies you should pursue based on your morals and the facts. One realize that there is no absolute right or wrong answer to many political questions. Is abortion a woman's right to choose which I believe very strongly or is it the murder of a child? Some answers depend on your own set of values and morality. Many political topics boil down to this, I. E. Income inequality. Is society. At least partly. Responsible to try to even the playing field and redistribute income and wealth by taxation and social programs or should it be a capitalist free for all? It entirely depends on your belief system. 2. That doesn't mean that there are no facts. Moral values and judgment can vary from person to person. But facts cannot. Check your sources and make sure they do not outright lie to you or cherry pick facts. To take your example of healthcare, 
reports in the US about in Canada and the UK or how much worse these systems are compared to the US system can easily be verified to be exaggerations and lies by a few minutes of googling reliable sources. YouTube Facebook and Twitter should never ever be considered a source. Even if a reputable source is cited, go to the original source and check there. To look closely at who is making a certain argument. Climate change denial. For example, is almost entirely an US phenomenon in the developed world and is financed by the fossil fuel industry. Chiefly by the Cook brothers one of whom has died recently. And good riddance. If an argument is brought forth by a nebulous think tank, assume that it is financed by dark money. Ignore the cries of liberal universities and bias against conservatives in the mainstream media and go with the scientific consensus over some think tank or lonely crank on YouTube. Go with established, well-regarded media like the BBC, The Guardian, The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, The Financial Times or CNN over internet crackpots like Infowars, Breitbart and, and, yes. I realize there's a left-leaning bias in the sources I cited. But as I have argued at other times, journalistic quality isn't something the American right seems to have any interest in. And all the sources I mentioned have consistently shown to put journalistic integrity over political affiliation. Despite what Trump might say, quality journalism with the right-leaning editorial bent can be found in the Wall Street Journal. For example, 3. What are other countries doing? In the case of healthcare, the US is the only developed country without some sort of universal healthcare system. That is at least a very strong indication that it is doing something wrong. Add to that the fact fact. Not opinion that it pays more per capita than any other nations for worse outcomes and you have the basis for your belief. Now, it is true that the US achieves better outcomes than other countries at the highest level of care I e if you are filthy rich you can get the best care in the world but on average health outcomes in the US are among the worst in the developed world other arguments like the yes but the US is paying for the lion's share of research and development costs and other countries are simply leeching off us are harder to debunk they are wrong on many many levels but that would go beyond the scope of this comment suffice it to say that a huge share of R&D is paid for by taxpayers and not the pharmaceutical industry and is thus already accounted for for don't close yourself off in an echo chamber if you are left-leaning watch some Fox News and read Breitbart and the Drudge Report if you are leaning right read the NYT and watch MSNBC Expose yourself to the world other people live in. If you have no leanings whatsoever, just try to consume more than one source and you'll make up your mind eventually.